Now, radiation, when we think of radiation in space, we usually think about it for humans, and we'll explore this later in the course, but it's actually just as effective, important for electronics, right? That's right. I mean, we have the uh, radiation belts around the Earth. It's yep. called the Van Allen belts. Yep. Um, and they basically consist of very fast moving electrons and protons, uh, different distribution of them in between that different belts. Yep. And they change inside due to solar wind. Because this, this is only in the period of a few days. And so this is in real time actually changing the radiation belts. And what this means is there's a steady stream of these very fast moving particles plunging through your spacecraft at all times. So what do they do? Well, we can kind of see what they do. Now, they don't have much effect on like a lump of aluminium or something like this. Okay. Where they're really dangerous is for the electronics, okay. particularly for silicon chips. Uh -huh. Now, what we've actually got is a bunch of silicon chips which are used as cameras for space telescopes. This is silicon chip, which is very much similar to silicon chips in a microprocessor, yep. but it's actually used to take pictures of things in space. This That's is one right. from the Hubble Space Telescope. And what you can see in a typical exposure, that we both analyzed lots of this data, mm -hmm. is all these colored marks are bits of the silicon chip that during that exposure have been hit by a radiation particle. So essentially, radiation particles traveled through space and actually traveled through the detector and kept right. going and left a mark on that image. What it does is it's knocked electrons out of yep. the atoms, um, producing a pile of charge. Yep. Uh, we call them cosmic rays. In this case, for example, the electrons come in right down the edge of the chip. So it's left a long trail. That's right, because it can come in any direction, right? It can come up, down, side to side. And we get these on our cameras on Earth, but much less, right? That's right. But there are much more of them in space. Now, it's a, it's a pain for analyzing astronomy data. But now you've got to consider an actual microprocessor that's doing something like controlling your spacecraft, a computer chip. So I guess if, yeah, if I hit that little spot right there, which is the self-destruct button, for instance. Yeah, so this is uh, actually the die that makes a Pentium 3 processor. Okay. So a rather old uh, silicon chip. And you've got huge numbers of logic gates or yep. memories. But let's imagine, and you can do permanent damage. It could be that an electron or a proton going through could permanently destroy one of these things. Yep. But the bigger problem, that, that does happen, but the bigger problem is that if this is a memory chip but it's or doing a calculation, yes. every one of these little elements is holding a number, a one or a zero. That's right. And when a cosmic ray or these radiation particles goes through, it can flip it from a zero to one. Exactly. And, and I guess, if, as you said, you showed those some from the side, right? If it comes from the side, it hits a whole bunch of them. Yeah, that's right. And if, for example, this bit here is deciding whether to fire your retro rockets, and it's saying no, zero means don't fire retro rockets, and suddenly a cosmic ray comes through and flips it to yes, fire the retro rockets. Or this one over here is controlling uh, communication yep. with Earth, and when you flip it to one, it says, okay, I'm going to switch myself off and stay off. So it can be a really serious problem that you're just getting random bits of your code changing. Is there any way we can prevent this? Well, partially you want to use electronics that's going to be resistant. Okay. And you don't really know until you try it. So a lot of people tend to use rather old processes in space. Because they, they know it Someone's works. flown it before yeah, and found that it's not okay. too bad. And then you want error checking. So every time a message comes to it saying, I think we should fire the retro rockets, you want something else from a different part of the chip to say, are you really sure? <laughs> uh, maybe all three things need to say yes. Because uh, okay. then it's very unlikely that three cosmic rays will go through all three at the same time. So you can kind of have software ways of preventing these malfunctions. Yes, yeah, so some combination of that's going to be what helps you. Um, now, where you are in space also makes a difference. Okay. Now, the radiation belts are particularly bad in medium Earth orbits, which is one reason why few people yeah. use them. Because as we talked about earlier, most are in low Earth orbit. We have a few at geosynchronous orbit, but not a lot yet yeah. in that middle Earth orbit. So geosynchronous orbits out in the outer radiation belts, so that's not as bad as yep. the inner radiation belts. In low Earth orbit, you're mostly okay, okay. except over the South Atlantic. What's up with the South Atlantic? Well, this is called the South Atlantic Anomaly. I, I feel it's like a new Michael Bay movie, if you tell him. <laughs> yes, it definitely sounds like the Bermuda Triangle, but this <laughs> is kind of the Bermuda Triangle for spacecraft. And what happens is it turns out that the inner radiation belt dips particularly low over the South Atlantic, simply okay. because of exactly where the magnetic poles of the Earth uh, are, and the uh, fact that the magnetic center of the Earth is not quite the geographic exactly, center. That's right. So what that means is when you're over the this region over Argentina, Paraguay, into yep. the South Atlantic, the radiation belt dips lower. So even satellites in low Earth orbit are going through the radiation. So, and I, and I assume the pink areas are less? That's right. What you can see, they did this test. This is the Hubble Space Telescope flew through this region. And, and, and I assume this just has to do it normally because that's the orbit it's in? Yeah, so it was just doing its normal orbits. And one of them went over here. And what they did was they took a series of exposures. Oh, wow. 
uh, looking at how many of these radiation particles hit their detector. So, so this middle range where it looks like stars are actually these cosmic rays or radiation particles. That's right. So in fact, what they normally do for spacecraft is when you know it's going over the South Atlantic, you'll actually switch them into yeah. almost a hibernation mode. Mm. I remember observing with an international ultraviolet explorer and they said, OK, it's going to go over the South Atlantic. We're just going to shut down for the next half an hour while it goes over there because there's so much junk going to go into all our detectors. Which is too much risk. I mean, yeah, it, in order to clean this up to find anything, you're not even going to get useful data anyways out there, let alone, as you said, the harm to your instrument. And if it's in hibernation, there's less chance of accidentally firing its retro rocket or accidentally yep. turning itself off. Now, of course, this may also vary with time okay. because the radiation belts are always there. But when you get a storm on the surface of the sun, we talked about this in the stars course, yep. uh, like a flare there, it's called a coronal mass ejection, uh, can squirt huge amounts of radiation out. You're going to see one bursting off the side here. Boom. And, and, and that's the thing, that boom keeps going, right? Yeah, so here we're looking further out and you'll see one of these booms It'll start in the sun. And then it originates Ooh. out and goes for a long distance. And what this means is you get a, a sudden surge in radiation. It's probably not too much in low Earth orbit because the, the radiation belts protect you. When you're further out in yes. space, it can be quite bad. So this is going to be bad for geostationary satellites. Exactly. And I guess, the, like everything, the bigger the storm, the more impact it's going to have. If you have really big storms, or a lot of them, repeatedly, that's going to have a longer term um, effect rather than just a one-off small storm. And we are monitoring the sun, yep. so when you know one of these storms is coming, you might turn a lot of the satellites into some sort of safe mode. And, and they do this quite regularly. I don't think people appreciate that when they hear these storms. Yes, they go into safe mode to prevent these damage. Oh, of course, it also produces the aurora. So and we've, at the time of filming, there have been a bunch of particularly good aurora around the world, and that's because of these coronal mass ejections. So the satellite engineers are tearing their hair out, but people on Earth... <laughs> so on Earth, we like the view, but in set space, it's the exact opposite. Yeah. There's one other thing we need to talk about for electronics, which is actually self-interference. Okay. You've just got to imagine like a communication satellite yep. broadcasting with enormous power, direct broadcasts, TV to some people's satellite dishes 36,000 kilometers away and there's a big trouble that can often interfere with other things nearby. Okay. So you have to be very careful when you design your spacecraft that the extremely strong broadcast and receiving of signals doesn't interfere with something else on yes. it. So they have rooms like this, this is again up at Mount Stromlo, where you can actually try out the radio emissions and make yeah. sure that it's not going to interfere with something else on board. That's right, because again, if your receiver is going to pick up interference and that it's not only going to work half the time or half the signal, then you want to design that before it's in space, because once it's in space, you can't fix it. And nowadays, the, a lot of countries are investigating users as weaponry. Yes. They actually fire a microwave beam at a satellite and try and jam it or fry its electronics or something like That's this. That's right.